let's play a game called Can You Make These Old Drums Sound Metal? I'm too old for this crap. Yeah, hello. <laughs> Today, we're looking at two different drums from the 60s, both Ludwigs, because someone on Instagram messaged me and said, hey, man, can these old drums still be used for metal? Today, do they sound good? I don't know. We're going to find out. So I have uh, a metal one and a wood one. We'll start with the wood one. This is a uh, mid-60s jazz fest, which is primarily known as the Beatle snare drum, the Ringo Starr dr snare drum. Now, his was a different finish. His was what was called Black Oyster Pearl. This is a very much rarer finish. Uh, I bought this from a friend of mine, Sahan, and Sahan gave me this beautiful collectible card with it. It's a certificate of authenticity, one very rare Ludwig snare drum in blue beetle finish, uh, as signed on the front here by Jim Beetle himself. Very rare, very rare. <laughs> So, very, very standard 60s drum, primarily known for early pop, early pop rock. What the heck is it going to do in a metal context? Let's, let's hear it by itself right now. An interesting tone. I tried to make it sound more modern. I put an Evans UV2 on top, snare side 300 on the bottom, and it's got uh, 20 strand pure sound blasters, good wires, good heads, and it still sounds very much like a vintage drum. So we'll see what it sounds like with music later. Right now, I think we're going to give this thing a listen because I think it's going to be much closer to what you're looking for uh, in modern metal. So this is actually, it's not a supraphonic, which you might think by looking at it. This is a Ludwig Super 400. Well, what the heck is that? I think it was 50 and 60, 1959, 1960, Ludwig used a brass shell instead of the very widely known aluminum shell for the Superphonic, which was a little bit different, a heck of a lot heavier. And they had chrome over brass hoops on here, which I think helped the tone too. Heavy snare drum, beautiful looking, beautiful sounding. Give this thing a listen now because I think you're really going to see like this, this you can tell is going to do some damage in the metal, the metal world. Now that to me is a much closer step towards what we're looking for tonally. Only difference really between this and the other one is I have 16 strand wires on this drum and then I have the G2 Evans on the top here. And then obviously the shell material and the hoop material, much, much different. Now let's hear these things in a musical context and something to remember here, folks. I don't use samples. So let's start with the Jazz Fest, Blue Beetle, because I'm sure all you freaking people want to know, is this Ringo snare going to do anything that's worth listening to? Find out now! <laughs> I tried. I tried very hard to get this thing to sound metal. And it's very, it's difficult. It took me like 20 or 30 minutes to try to get that mix that you just heard to, to sound like anything palatable. And so I don't think, I don't think you can really get away with metal if you're just using the sounds of the microphones. Now the mid body, those mid frequencies could lend themselves 
if you're into what we call, you know, beat replacement, uh, using samples, that sort of thing. If you use a sam sample, sample replacement, what you can do is layer a beautiful snare sound like this, or like this, or like that. Okay, maybe not the last one, but you can use a nice snare drum sound and kind of place it where every time you hit the snare drum is on the grid, blend that with the original microphones, and then you'd have a real nice metal tone with frickin' Ringo Dingus's drum right here. But I'm gonna tell you right now, with the Super 400, it's a totally different story. Check out this mix. the first mix with the wood snare drum took forever. I didn't have to really take any time mixing this little metal drum. When it sat in my mix template um, in, in Logic, I moved a couple faders a little bit and I was like, all right, that sounds good. All just the mics, obviously some EQ and compression, but there's no samples in that thing. And I, I think it sounds pretty good, much better than the last one. And even this kit is older, uh, you know, older than me. These are some dad drums for sure. So today you're looking at a recording custom with both of these snare drums from 80, about 87, 22, 12, 16, uh, Evans heads all around. And then the, the Turkish cymbals with a, a Zildjian China in the mix here as well. So old drums, old world cymbals, old snare drums, you can do metal with just about anything with a little bit of modern magic. So that's something to keep in mind next time you, you go into a studio and all they have is an old Ludwig kit and you brought your double pedal and you're supposed to play some grindcore or whatever the kids are playing now with the blast beats. There you have it. Thanks for joining me and uh, come back next time for some more rotten garbage content.